I'll definitely bring you back to the Labour. Thank you very much, Professor. Uh, ambassador, can I just, uh, you can talk about whatever you want, but I've just got two <laughs> things that are nagging me. Yeah, go ahead. Right, which is this thing about left and right. And also, I work in university. yeah, yeah, because you know, we talked about pre neoliberalism, which probably started in about the early 90s, 91, most people think, in Colombia. So, what was it like before? And also, you know, the idea that Sergio Fajardo is not left wing is certainly true, and clearly Uribe isn't mm. either. But, but at the same time, they're not classic neoliberal right wing, mm. exactly. and there's a lot of interesting kind of, um, you know, state involvement and planning involvement. And the other question is a much more kind of classic e e economic question this issue of whether there is local demand. For, for, for micro enterprises, something that the professor has talked about, something that came up here, and I, I'd be interested in what you think about that because one of the m one of the main, I suppose, critiques that Milton and Kate are coming up with is that there's not enough local demand. And I think by local they mean barrio demand rather mm. than men in India. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. But it's mm. there's not enough local demand to, to get micro enterprises going. I, I'm interested in what you think about that. But also, you may well have. I'm sure you do have many, many other things you want to say. So. Okay, uh, thank you, Jonathan, for, for this uh, invitation. Very interesting, very nice uh, opportunity to share some ideas about uh, Colombia and in particular about Medellin. And thank you very much, uh, Kate, uh, Milford, and Alan, for your research and your ideas. They are very welcome in Colombia. We need this kind of serious academic uh, research and analysis and ideas to, to improve the conditions uh, of uh, all Colombians, especially the, the poorest. Uh, I want to elaborate a little bit about social urbanism, because I think that's something particularly uh, good about uh, Bogota and Medellin, and uh, that will help me address your question about left or right in, in, in Colombia. And uh, let me start by, by saying that uh, even though Sergio Fajardo did a wonderful job in, in uh, developing, uh, uh, materializing social urbanism in, in Medellin, the credit uh, must be given to Enrique Peñalosa the mayor of Bogota from 1997 to 2000, who was really the innovator, the creator of this concept in, uh, in, uh, in Bogota. And, and Alan probably, you know, uh, more in detail about uh, his uh, uh, contribution to the progress of Bogota, which was enormous. In those three years, Bogota made the most significant progress in its history. And uh, the idea of Peñalosa later replicated by Fajardo in Medellin with his own content and his own uh, twists and, and uh, uh, special, uh, special items, was to, to uh, fight against inequality, against exclusion, demolish all the cultural, social, political, economic, and physical barriers, give dignity to, to uh, the lives of all the citizens, especially the poorest, build the trust that you mentioned, the uh, Milford, uh, build trust among the citizens and uh, give legitimacy to the, to the government. And uh, this was uh, not even created by, by, by Peñalosa. He was also following the models of uh, Curitiba, of Barcelona, of Bilbao, or s of some other places in which by a very, very I intense and focused and in intelligent uh, urbanism, uh, those issues were properly dealt with. So Peñalosa and Fajardo, what they did was build the high quality public spaces, high quality architecture, especially, especially, and this was very important signal to the whole society, especially in the poorest areas. That was a big surprise, you know, because the most beautiful libraries, public libraries that you find in Bogota and, and, and Medellin are in the poorest neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. in, in the past, the solutions for the poor were poor, no? give them a small library in a small house with mm -hmm. a few books. And, and suddenly, these two guys, Peñalosa and uh, uh, Fajardo, decide that the, that the largest uh, chunks of investment and the, the highest quality uh, infrastructure of the city is going to the poorest. It was a very strong signal. And then, let me address the point about, are they left or right? They, I don't know. They, they probably, they don't even know. They don't care. <laughs> They're pragmatists. What they want is to improve the conditions of their cities. Uh, if there's a good idea from the left, they take it. If it there's a good idea from the right, they'll take it. They're pragmatic. As the Deng Xiaoping said, as long as the uh, mouse, uh, uh, the cat uh, catches mice, I don't care if it's black or white. And sometimes, so sometimes it's very difficult to classify them, to see. And I like that very much. Because both of them, Peñalosa and Fajardo, they are not politicians. 
They are very, uh, they come from an academic back background, the technical oriented people. They are, they, they are completely the opposite of the traditional politicians in, in, in Colombia. And they, ha they were very independent, zero corruption, completely honest. They chose high quality, high performance uh, teams to deliver. And that's why they were able to do so much in a very short period of time. And the resources, what about resources? The, the political decision that they made that was very important is to give priority to the poorest and to give priority to public investments, to public space, to public schools, to public libraries. I don't know if that's left or right, but it made, sen made a lot of sense and was what uh, Bogotá and Medellín needed at the time, to change, to change the, the, uh, the situation that uh, those uh, cities were experiencing at the time. And I think that there are results, uh, uh, Jonathan, even though, of course, there's still uh, inequality and there's still many uh, poor people living in Bogota and Medellin. If you look at the Human uh, Development Index indicators in Medellin in the poorest areas, there has been a significant improvement in a very short period of time after those uh, interventions. These interventions, as I was mentioning, they were very technical, not political. They, they were made by interdisciplinary team of architects, engineers, economists, social workers, very well thought, very well planned, uh, working hand in hand with the community. This was also very important. They, uh, it was not just a, an isolated group of uh, 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 experts uh, working on their own. No, they were talking to the neighborhoods. They were analyzing the realities of each and every single corner in every single neighborhood. They defined the very well the priorities, very well the priorities. So what you find here in this case of Medellin and, and Bogota is a good governance example, a good management, pragmatic, technical, non-political, non-corrupt guys with a very good uh, academic background uh, and uh, with a lot of popular support popular support people that were fed up with corruption and with the uh, traditional politicians. And it works, and it works. Uh, because I believe very much in what I read in that poster, that the role of governments remains critical. They cannot pick winners, but they can create good conditions for winners. What Fajardo and Peñalosa did in Medellin is create good conditions. Is that enough? I think clearly it's not enough because bo both Medellin and, and Bogota still have and, and face uh, very, very uh, difficult challenges. But both cities have made tremendous progress. Unfortunately, Bogota has had a difficult uh, uh, period in the past two or three years. And I don't want to get into details, but the, the it's fair to say that the, the uh, current mayor did not follow the steps of Peñalosa, Mocus, and Garzón, which were the mayors of Bogota, that even though they had different political opinions and different styles and different personalities, they had this common common uh, 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 interest in social urbanism. Uh, unfortunately, this uh, is not the case of uh, Mayor uh, More uh, Samuel Moreno in Bogota, and that's why Bogota has uh, not uh, done uh, well in the past uh, three years. But uh, I think, uh, again, that the, uh, Bogota and Medellin have proven that uh, there is a space and a need for a government intervention, social urbanism, but in a very modern, pragmatic fashion. It's not a, a, a central, uh, um, centrally planned uh, economy. It's not the government saying you do this or do the other. It, no, at the end of the day, it depends on people to, to, to work on those conditions and to take advantage of those conditions. Uh, now, I want to, to comment uh, on a couple of things uh, mentioned by, by Milford and by Kate. Uh, microfinance, I, I, I fully agree that microfinance cannot be seen as the, the solution for poverty in, in, uh, in the developing world, uh, not in Colombia or in Medellin or in Bogota in particular. I think, however, that it has a, a, a role to play. Limited, probably more limited than what uh, many people uh, expected uh, some years ago, mm, but, uh, but of course, uh, the Medellin case and the Bogota case are not relying on microfinance to improve the conditions of the of the poor, and I think that what we need to to uh, to uh, develop more to uh, to look uh, forward to uh, 
a further um, collaboration is the point uh, brought by, by Alan, again I mentioned by Kate, which is the need to strengthen the cooperation amongst all the public and private institutions. And I think here pre, uh, Pro Antioquia can play a very important role. Mm. Pro Antioquia is an organization, a private organization, managed by the most successful, largest corporations of Antioquia, which are very successful. And those guys really know how to run business. And they can create demand in Medellin. They can teach a lot about entrepreneurship to the uh, 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 startups in, in Medellin. Mm. And I think that they, they could play a, 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 a very important role. And I don't see that role as clear and as effective. And I think that uh, there has to be much more and better coordination amongst the pu public uh, 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 institutions because we have many duplications or vacuums on the contrary. And, and Alan, you're right, it's very difficult for to, to, to uh, make Colombians work as a team. We are nice people, but we are very individualistic. And uh, we, uh, some s I had a professor at the university that said that uh, Colombia does not really exist as a country. What we have in Colombia is 45 million countries. Hmm. Each of us, each Colombian is a country with its, its own constitution, a legal a, a framework, a, you know, <laughs> whatever. And it's true, it's true. And, and that's, that's uh, the essence of the problems of Colombia, of some of the problems of Colombia is the individualistic nature of Colombians. We don't, and that's why it's so important what Fajardo and Peñalosa did. What basically they did was say, hey guys, you are rich, you are wealthy in a society where people can live as equals where, where people can enjoy public goods. Wh when you ask, when you asked uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, uh, somebody in Colombia about the park, the public park or the public library, that's not mine. It's, that's from the government. Mm -hmm. If you ask them now, they'll say, "This is mine. This this space, this public space, this library, this is mine. This belongs to me." And that's I think that's the most important contribution of Fajardo and Peñalosa to create this awareness, this conscience of a pub, a mocus, of course, mocus and garzón, of course, as well, to create this conscience of public wealth, of public, uh, 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 of, uh, public goods, mm -hmm. and, and the need to, to invest in those public goods, to share those public goods, and I, I think that's at the heart of the revolution that they have done. Is it enough? Of course not, but it's a, a very important contribution, and I think that's a model that is worthwhile to study and replicate in some other countries of, of the world. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Thank you very much, Ambassador and Professor, for those two very, very useful contributions. Uh, Ambassador, you especially focused, I suppose, on culture, um, changing culture, which is a very convincing argument. I suppose my question, and I, I won't ask you to answer it because I want to bring everyone else in, but is what are the job prospects for the poor in the barrios? And I think that's still something that is it's not quite clear. Industrialization is not taking off in Colombia, for instance, or 